Now, we'll discuss about the development of the tongue. First of all, we make the diagram. This is developing embryo. This is developing foregut, midgut. This is hindgut. Here is buccopharyngeal membrane. This is developing embryo. Here you can see this part is foregut, the buccopharyngeal membrane. The cranial part of the foregut here, this is cranial part of the foregut. A series of thickening appears here. These thickenings are known as pharyngeal arches. Initially, six arches are formed. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And just after formation, fifth arch become disappeared. If you cut a section like this, you'll find this is first arch. This is second, this is third, this is fourth, this is fifth. This is endodermal lining, which covers from inner side. This is ectodermal lining. This is first arch, second, third, fourth, and this is sixth arch. This is sixth arch. First, second, third, fourth, and sixth. Fifth become disappear just after its formation. Here, near median plane. Two swellings appear. This swelling is lingual swelling. These are two swelling. This is known as lingual swelling. And here is tuberculum impar. This angular swelling is tuberculum impar. This is Tuberculum impar. Just behind of this, here is a foramen cecum. From here, thyroglossal duct passes downward. This is position here. Here. The thyroglossal duct descends downward and forms. Thyroid gland. This is thyroid gland. This opening is opening of the thyroglossal duct. Here. Here is this is hypobranchial eminence. This is hypobranchial eminence. If you take this diagram here, these are two 
lingual swelling in his tuberculum impar, his foramen cecum, and here is position of hypobronchial eminence, which divides into upper cranial part, lower caudal part. Cranial part is known as copula. Gradually, these proliferates. Lingual swelling proliferates. Like this. These are two lingual swellings. Grows upward like this. And joins the medial plane. And this swelling here. It lies like this. Here is position of foramen cecum, and this is cup shaped foramen. Uh, sorry, this is copula. This is cup shaped. And this part, caudal part, form epiglottis. This is epiglottis. So you, here you can see gradually this portion which develops from tuberculum impar become reduced in size and become disappear like this. Sometimes it persists and it looks like reddish smooth part sometimes persists like this here red smooth area and mostly it becomes disappear now this part this is anterior two third of the tongue and this is posterior one third of the tongue and this is posterior most part of the tongue this is posterior most part of the tongue it develops from this part so this, this tongue develops like this if you see the nerve supply of the tongue on the basis of the development, first arch, this is first arch, and you get two third of from first arch, so nerve of first arch is post nerve, is mandibular nerve. So it is supplied by mandibular nerve, and this is second arch nerve, facial nerve, facial nerve gives a branch, this is pre-traumatic of the first arch this is known as corda tympani so anterior two third is supplied by mandibular nerve and corda tympani which is a branch of the facial nerve mandibular is general sensory nerve and corda tympani carry special sensor test sensor from anterior two third of the tongue and this posterior one third of the tongue this supplied here, this is this is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. This is third third arch. So it develops from third arch. That's why it is supplied by glossopharyngeal nerve. And here, this part, this develops from fourth arch. Nerve of the fourth arch is superior laryngeal nerve, which is branch of the vagus nerve. So you can easily explain on development of basis. On basis of the development, it's not supply. And that's it. If you see in the sagittal plane, you will find this is anterior, this is first arch, here is second arch, this is third arch, this is fourth arch. Gradually, this first arch grows like this from anterior to third of the tongue and this second arch it buried this arch buried it lies deep in substance of the tongue and gradually become disappear and this part here is posterior one third part which develops from third arch this is third arch and here is posterior most part epigradis that is fourth arch so this is in the 
So that would be here. Here is foramen of the cecum. This is foramen of the cecum. Here, thyroglossal duct descends and form the thyroid gland. This is position of thyroid bone. So it descends like this and in relation to here from thyroid gland. This is thyroglossal duct. Sometimes the remnant of the thyroglossal duct persists in the tongue, then it is known as lingual th thyroid. If tissue persists here, that is known as lingual thyroid. So this is all about the development of the tongue and one other thing. Uh, sometimes the tip of the tongue do not fuse with each other. These tips are the, which develop from the lingual swelling do not fuse with each other completely. Then there is bifidus tongue. This tongue is bifidus tongue. Sometimes the tongue is very large. That is known as macroglossia. Sometimes the tongue is very small. That is known as microglossia. Sometimes the tongue is absent. Then it is known as aglossia. Sometimes tongue is adherent to the floor of the mouth by the frenulum lingui, like this. Then it is known as tongue tie. This is tongue tie. So this is all about the development of the tongue. Thank you.